Be bold. Be heard. Welcome to Unmute Your Mic with your host, Jessica Bell. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of Unmute Your Mic. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Unmute Your Mic. My name is Jessica Bell. I am your host from Kansas City, Missouri, as always. And today I'm super honored to have Dion Sanchez with me. She is currently in Florida. Uh, Dion, I just thank you for agreeing to be on my show today. Uh, if you could just please introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about you. Sure. My name is Dion Sanchez. Um, as you just stated, um, I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, I'm the host of my own podcast, Words of Heart. And I'm just a down-earth person and just all about helping others in any way I can. Great. And so I know that you mentioned that you have a, uh, a podcast of your own. Can you share a little bit about that, uh, the heart behind it, what made you start it, that kind of thing? Sure. I started the podcast, um, ironically, based off of another podcast, to be honest. Um, I wasn't really into podcasts. Um, I never really been vocal or anything along that lines. But um, about a year ago, um, I got diagnosed with diabetes, um, which is a drastic change in my life. And I didn't expect to experience it. So... Um, as a result of that, my response was that this was God's way of giving my life more purpose, giving me another chance to live my life, because um, I could have, well, died. Um, unfortunately, those that's what happens when you experience symptoms of diabetes, when you weren't aware they were diabetic-related at the time. So, um, so I, God's called me to be more vocal as a result of my diagnosis, be more vocal, use the power of your voice for good. And I wasn't sure exactly how he wanted me to do that. Um, I had done spoken word videos um, prior to my podcast. So I was already used to using my voice in some form. So um, I started listening to this podcast, courtesy of this young adult small group I'm a part of. And it was really encouraging and insightful, and it got me thinking, like, perhaps I should start a podcast, because they're always saying that what I say matters, and my voice is so inspiring and encouraging. So I thought, hey, why not give it a shot and start a podcast? And considering the unfortunate times we are in, I thought that it should help. Ah, I'm like mumbling here. I'm not used to these interviews yet. This is my second interview in the past two days. Oh, no, you're fine. You're doing fine. <laughs> uh, so I thought because of the current times we're in that everyone could use some encouragement and some positivity. And if my voice could help in some way, then w why not do it? So I started the podcast, Words of Heart. Um, the title was kind of a no-brainer because I literally speak everything from my heart and um, the podcast cover art they always um, accompany you with um, was also helpful. And I just basically started my podcast because of another podcast, really. And um, I'm currently in season two. I've been interviewing different types of people and they've been sharing their stories and their struggles and how they've overcome all adversity and basically what your podcast is about. It's just sharing stories and hoping that their stories help other people in some small way. And I love that. I love the reason behind why you said you wanted to start your podcast, right? Because I think a lot of times we go through things and you have the option to either decide I'm going to use what I'm going through to push me forward and to inspire other people, or I'm just going to kind of hide in the corner and just, you know, 
be, feel sorry for myself. So I think it's very inspiring when people take things that they've struggled with and use it to create a platform to help and be able to inspire other people. And so I know you mentioned you had gotten diagnosed with um, diabetes. And so can you share a little bit about what that has been like, what that has, um, uh, what that story, what that's done for your story per se? Sure. Um, yes, I got diagnosed about a year ago. So I've been, um, when I got diagnosed, it was um, in the midst of the pandemic, unfortunately. Um, two months prior to that, um, I was losing a dangerous amount of weight, um, which was unexplainable. No one understood what was going on. Um, it was a really devastating um, time for me and my family. And I was also currently in school at the time. So um, in school, everything was going good. I had just turned 24. My life seemed to have been under control. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I was sick. And um, just to give you an idea of the symptoms, um, when you're diabetic or have low blood sugar, um, which is, is a common symptom, um, you are fatigued, dizzy, um, can't keep anything down. Um, I took like maybe one bite of food and I would be full or I would throw up. I was basically a skeleton and i um, trying to think of a more specific term. Pretty much my body was eating itself from the inside out. Unfortunately, that's the best description I can give and I'm pretty sure everyone can understand that description. Definitely, so, yeah, yeah. Um, two months prior to my diagnosis, it was a really scary time. Um, I was really, really depressed. Um, these holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, they're supposed to be real happy times amongst your family members, but it wasn't for me. I was just, I kept, I was afraid to look at myself in the mirror. I was, I'm used to weighing about, yeah, 125 pounds or so, and I was about 90 pounds, um, probably even less, because I was, it was really devastating. So um, fast forward to January 8th, um, at this point, or, or the day before January 8th, nobody really knew what was going on. Um, my family were it was really difficult for them because um, I've, I've gone through quite a bit in my life. Um, I had a lot of health deficiency, deficiencies, unfortunately, when I was born. So to have to undergo any drastic change at this point in my life when I've had everything under control wasn't an easy adjustment. So um, I was feeling slightly okay prior a couple days beforehand like okay maybe this is just a bug or a flu until on um, Wednesday um, morning around 1 30 I threw up again um I was pretty much crying for about an hour before I um got up the nerve to wake up my father who was asleep at the time to be like look um, you told me to tell you if I were to get sick again that you need to take me to the hospital. Um, and I'm sure he would have, but considering it was like 2 a.m. Um, and he was passed out, I'm like, okay, let me just wake him up when he gets ready for work in the morning. But eventually I fell asleep. Um, so um, it was 1030 when I woke up. My sister was there. And she ended up taking me to the hospital. Um, they did, ran a lot of tests. Um, it was really terrifying because I don't really have any hospital vi visits to my knowledge. And um, they ran a lot of tests, needles, blood, the works. And um, um, they couldn't stay with me overnight, which was hard <laughs> because I, I had no clue what was happening to me still. So I was pretty much in the hospital room by myself. 
And um, the following morning, um, like three different doctors came in and they told me like, hey, look, um, you have diabetes. Um, and it was a lot for me to handle. It was a lot for me to process. Um, luckily, um, the hospital I was admitted to, my sister worked there. So I wasn't completely alone in experiencing this news. So she was a real um, support um, during the whole beginning stages of this process. Um, so I was in the hospital for about a week. Um, some of my family members came to see me. Um, my best friend, Zandra, who was the only person I knew that was diabetic. Um, I had no clue about diabetes or how it worked. Um, she took time out of her schedule to come see me in the hospital. I didn't ask her to. She just up and came and saw me. Um, we've been best friends since we were kids. So um, God really like christened our friendship from day one, pretty much, um, because we met through the church and we just have to be diabetic in our 20s. So um, it wasn't an easy time for me. Um, I got and I can only imagine, just as I'm hearing you share the story, how scary that must be. Because like you said, I think it's always terrifying when we have things that are going on inside of our bodies and we are not aware of what is happening. Um, and, you know, I can, and then I'm in the midst of everything that's going on in the world and the pandemic and, you know, and COVID and all those other things that are happening, you know, having an illness and you're not really understanding what it is it can definitely put you in a place of like real fear and, you know, and even maybe depression and that kind of thing. And so once you were diagnosed and you at least knew what it was, you know, what were some of the steps that you took to kind of, you know, move forward, figure out what to do next? And did you feel any relief knowing what was wrong then at that point? Um, I definitely felt um extreme amount of relief because um, I knew that there was something that could be done. Um, I wasn't going to turn into dust. Um, basically, that's the thought that was going on in my head throughout that whole crazy time. I'm going to turn into dust. I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to, it's going to be morning and I'm not going to be able to wake up. But um, yes, I definitely felt a huge sign of relief. Um... It was hard for my family to understand my perspective towards this particular news because, again, I had experienced so much growing up. So how can I inject myself with needles every single day and prick myself? Like, how on earth can you possibly do that? But it's really quite simple. I have to do it or else I'm not going to live. Um, and, yeah, I didn't suspect for this to happen to me during this pandemic, unfortunately. Um, it was January. The pandemic obviously had gotten worse, but not to the extent it has been at this particular point. Um, so um, because of this drastic change in my life, I chose to, well, take a break from school. Um, and speaking of school, somehow while I was sick, I still managed to pass my classes. So that was a wow, miracle. that's a true blessing. And I think that that speaks to your ability to keep moving and keep pushing forward. And I love that you said that your family was like, you know, how can you deal with this? But you said, like, I have no choice. I have to. Like, I'm not going to give up on myself. I'm not going to throw in the towel just because I have experienced something that maybe is not you know, it's obviously something that people don't want to experience, but or it's not necessarily favorable. But when life throws things at us, we have no choice but to decide if we're going to keep moving or not. And so I know, you know, that probably was difficult for your family and stuff, because then they had to witness you going through this um, and that kind of thing. And so you said you were able to, you know, get great, good grades and stuff for school. What were you in school for? Um, I'm in school um, for digital media. Um, specifically, it's majored in graphic design. I don't know really how... I go to school at St. Petersburg College um, here in Florida. I don't 
know how their program quite works, but I'm in the digital media program to be more specific. Um, the classes I were taking were just two classes. Um, one of them was like imaging fundamentals and the second class was web design, which it was my second time retaking that particular class. So I couldn't really afford to have to fail that class. Actually, I couldn't really afford to fail any of my classes really because I'm a real hardworking student. And considering the field of study that is digital media, it's so expansive and so challenging. And if you miss a day, you're basically missing like 500 years. Like it's a really challenging field. So for me to miss any classes isn't really possible, but I somehow managed to pass my classes and go to class when I was well enough to and then communicate through the proper channels, through my instructors, because I hadn't missed any days of school prior to being sick. So I was owed a couple of days off of school, but obviously when it comes down to it, my health is more important than my academics. So, um, and I love that you were able to, to pull off both. You were able to figure out what was going on with you health wise, but then you were able to still have enough strength and, and purpose and passion to be able to continue with school, um, at least during that time, which I know would have been extremely difficult. So can I ask you, with these things that you have faced, with things that you are uh, going through or you did go through, why do you think you haven't quit? Why haven't you thrown in your thrown in the towel? Why haven't I thrown in the towel? Um, it's not in my nature. Um, considering, um, cause I've had all types of struggles being diabetic during the pandemic, unfortunately wasn't a struggle I predicted. Um, but if I hadn't been diagnosed, um, in 2020, the year we all want to forget about, I wouldn't be here right now. But, um, to give you a little bit of background into why it's ingrained in me to never give up, um, um, when I was born for the first two years of my life, and this is kind of a truth bomb I'm sure you're not going to expect, I couldn't hear her talk. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Obviously, I'm talking and speaking, so that clearly didn't last long. But um, it really just started from the day I was pretty much born. I was different than anybody else. Um, my family tends to call me a miracle child because I ended up learning how to talk and speak and everything. But um, my whole life growing up, I've faced obstacles. Um, because of my health deficiencies when I was born, it took me a lot longer to learn things. Like people learn how to tie their shoes at like five. I learned at like eight. Like I had to overcome so many obstacles because of the fact of how I was born and everything. Um, the doctors even told my parents like, look, she's gonna be retarded and everything. So like, that's not something you wanna tell your a parent or anything, but um, I proved everybody pretty much wrong. I worked hard my whole entire life, tried to prove to everybody that, hey, I am smart. I'm just as good as anybody else. So I graduated from high school with a 3.0 GPA, um, got like two or three scholarships, and I've pretty much been different since the day I was born. So it's not in me to give up. I mean, God gave my life purpose, and it's I'm like getting choked up here because I have gone through a lot and it's just not in me to give up. Yeah, I didn't expect to be diabetic, um, but it's better than the alternative and that's simply not being here. Wow. Um, I thank you for sharing that, um, first of all, but then it does give me and the people who are... Um, 
who are listening more of an insight of why maybe this news wasn't necessarily the worst news that you've gotten because your life has been a story of overcoming, right? So even from before you knew you were overcoming because you were a baby or a young child, you have just always had to overcome. And I know that that can't be easy and everybody can't relate to that. Sometimes, you know, we have things where we're like, we had to overcome this or we had to overcome that, but you had to overcome and essentially prove people wrong majority of your life. And I love that you shared that. I love that you shared the fact that, you know, you've gotten, you've been in school and you've gotten good grades and you've really just had to live a life where God has basically just used you to prove people wrong. And I think, you know, it's so interesting because I don't think God is like, he's not petty in the sense of like, ha, 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 ha. But he <laughs> also, but he works in such a miraculous way because even if doctors say something, even if we should be perceived a certain way, he still uses us. And like you said, you definitely still have purpose um, and will continue to have it. And so that's so inspirational. And so it also shows a little bit why your parents may have felt how they felt, right? Because they're like, you know, this is our child. We love her and she's had to overcome so much. And parents don't like to see their children have to overcome things that they can't, that they can't necessarily step in and just fix right away. Um, right. And so if I could ask you, if you could just share, if there is somebody listening today who would like, who has found themselves going through struggles, um, more so specific struggles as far as like things with their body or with their health or even things with people telling them what they can't do. What would you say to inspire them? I would say that they're wrong. Who's ever telling you you're not good enough or you're invisible or you're just worthless. I would tell them that that person that's selling those things are wrong. They're just putting up a mask and just, uh, they're wrong. They, they, that person, whoever is listening, is a warrior and a badass. Um, I've been going through this whole mantra this year of being a warrior for change in spite of my circumstances. And you are an incredible human being, an individual. I know what it's like to feel different in an outsider and everything, but... I'm still, whew, I'm trying not to get emotional here. God gave my life more purpose. He's stuck with me my whole entire life when nobody else did. And I don't know what you, their belief system is or what have you, but you're an incredible person. You're a warrior. Everyone is a warrior in their own way. We've all overcome difficulties. We've all have our struggles and our flaws and it's because of those struggles and those flaws that really helps develop us and nurture us into the person we are meant to be. Like, because of my struggles, I was able to have my own podcast, which is kind of ironic because I can hear her talk the first two years of my life. So any discouragement you may have, it's okay to be scared. It's okay to have fears. But it's those fears that helps us become a better version of ourselves. That's so good. And I hope you know that every word that you spoke to, to people who are listening, those are the same things you are. So, and I, and I love that. I love that you're encouraging from a place of having to overcome, but also understanding that you yourself are a warrior. You yourself have had to prove people wrong time and time again, and we'll continue to do so. So I think that is so beautiful. And I thank you for your transparency in that. And I thank you for sharing, um, sharing that encouragement with others, because even if uh, people are struggling and it's not necessarily with the health thing, um, a lot of times we find ourselves in positions in our lives where we're constantly feeling like there is somebody telling us that we can't do something that we know we are called to do. And like you said, for somebody who was born with the things you were born with, the the irony of you <laughs> using those very things to not only change people's lives, but to bring glory to God and to say, look, if I can do it, so can you. And I know that 
I know that there is there is a spe very specific reason, not only that you have been called to speak out about things, but that's the but a reason why you've gone through the things that you've gone through. And so I thank you for that. And I wanted to ask you just one last question. Where does your story go from here? I know it is still being <laughs> written and I know it's beautiful, but where do you think it goes from here? Um, where does my story go from here? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but um, I guess where I hope my story leads me is to be um, based off of what I'm studying to be a social media director or coordinator for a nonprofit organization. Um, that's just like a career, obviously, because it's good to have a career. But um, my real future goal is to become a published author um, because I've written poetry. I guess I can chime this part in. Um, I've written poetry for about 11 years. So my real hopes is to continue to use my gifts to help others in any way I can and to become a published author and to have my own book of poetry. So I'm hoping my story leads me to writing an actual story. So, And I pray and believe that it does because you definitely have a story to share and you definitely are here for a reason. You definitely um, have the ability to speak for a reason because that was not, you are not a voice that can be silenced. And Dion, I just want to thank you again for sharing on my platform. You have inspired me as I'm sure you have inspired a lot of people who are listening. Um, I just, I appreciate you. And I love the fact that you have been willing to share. And um, I'm excited to see what the rest of your story looks like. I'm excited for it to continue to be written. I'm excited for your voice to continue to be heard on this platform and on platforms that are much larger than this because people need to hear you and they will hear you. And God has essentially made sure of that by making sure you had a voice. So Dion, I thank you again. Thank you, Jessica. Trust me, this is a real honor being on the podcast, really. Thank you. And I want to thank everybody for listening to another episode of Unmute Your Mic. I'm going to put Dion's information below so that you can stay connected with her, uh, be inspired by her, pray for her, and just pray for all of us. And I just thank you again, Dion. I thank you all for listening for another on another episode of Unmute Your Mic. God bless everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Unmute Your Mic. This week, I had the honor and privilege to hear the inspirational story from Dion, who lives in Florida. Um, please continue to stay connected with Unmute Your Mic. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, all under the title Unmute Your Mic. As always, thank you for supporting, sharing, subscribing, and please make sure to be bold, be brave, and continue to tell your story. Thanks for listening to Unmute Your Mic. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to Unmute Your Mic. Be sure to tune in next time when Jessica takes her mic off mute as she continues her journey to find stories that inspire and uplift our communities.